Joining me today is New England College Professor of History, Jim Walsh. So Jim, this show is all about July 4th. Um, and I, I may ask a question about the American Revolution, but is there anything else, you know, about July 4th that Americans probably ought to know, but we don't know? Well, John, that's funny you should ask, because there's a really eerie coincidence about July 4th. 50 years to the day from our celebrated Independence Day, at a time when we were starting to really celebrate it annually, at least in small ways, uh, the author of the Declaration of Independence died, mm. Thomas Jefferson, died in the morning on July 4th, 1826. Huh. Passed away right there in his bed at Monticello in Virginia. And some hundreds and hundreds of miles away in Braintree, Massachusetts, John Adams lay on his deathbed. Uh, they're said to be his last words, at least Jefferson lives. Because, of course, in 1826, news traveled by horse. And right. there's no way Jefferson could have known that his best friend was already dead. So, so two of the signers, two of uh, America on July 4th. Uh-huh. 50 years to the day. How's that for an eerie coincidence? Okay, well, there's got to be a conspiracy theory coming up from that somehow, somewhere, Probably right? Probably not. They're <laughs> okay. not the only two presidents to die on July 4th. Others? 1831, James Monroe. Not a signer, but alive at the time, and our fourth Virginia president, third, yeah, fourth Virginia president, uh, died on July the 4th. Hmm. Only one president was born on July 4th, Calvin Coolidge, in 1872. So, um, that's, I mean, well, that's a little bit, little bit of trivia. Right. Um, anything else on, on the date? Well, I think, I think what's really important is that we get out and celebrate our independence. Uh, it's not just a, a fun sci-fi movie, right? It's our Independence Day, and, and it's been an inspiration to people all over the world. Uh, American independence produced probably the French Revolution in 1789, and the words in our Declaration were adopted by the men who wrote, in fact, there's some evidence that Jefferson helped in the writing of the Declaration of Rights of Men. Uh, certainly our connection to France there, our connection to revolutions all over the world. Copies of the Declaration of Independence were carried all over Latin America. The Spanish tried to suppress it, but it was translated into Spanish in six different countries and it was behind the Mexican Revolution of 1821. So those words, the, the, the date July 4th, means something to people all over the world. It's not just fireworks, it's, it's the words that inspired it, right? We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal. So, I mean, and, the, and that's... Paraphrase. Yeah. The, Interesting thing about that is you think about really what they're saying is it, it, it was the beginning of democracy, right? And I mean, not the beginning. Sure. Yeah. Obviously, it, well, we're not we're not going to go back to ancient Greece here. No. But and, and, uh, sort of the modern era of democracy, right? Th this notion that people are going to vote, um, and I think that's sort of still a legacy that's incredibly important today. It sure is. I, I mean, it, it, if if it's not even the beginning of voting. It's the beginning. It, it's the beginning of a country that has that that became the great symbol for democracy in the world, especially representative democracy. Think about this: in 1800, we held a contested election between John Adams and Thomas Jefferson, two men who had been friends for years, were no longer speaking to each other over ideological differences. They they only communicated because. Jefferson and John, John, uh, John Adams' wife, Abigail, were friends also, and they corresponded. They fought a bitter election campaign. It's referred to as the Revolution of 1800, because Adams, the sitting president, was defeated by his political enemy, Thomas Jefferson. And what happened after that election? Were there riots in the streets? Were there soldiers guarding the, uh, the, the presidential mansion? No. It was a transition of power. It was a transition of power between two ideological divided enemies without violence. Well, and you for know. The first time in Western history. So, I mean, and that reminds us how important our elections are and remind us how important 
the thing behind our elections right. are. The, the truths that we all hold self-evident. Well, we're, we're, we are, Jim, we're out of time, but we're going to have you back again, maybe on August 2nd. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, John. And thank you for joining this edition of Capital Connections, your weekly access to politics and policy along the I-89 and I-91 corridors and how it impacts your region. If you've got a comment or an idea for a future show, please send me an email. And remember, join us at this same time next week for another edition of Capital Connections.